Hey friends, welcome back to my channel and I'm doing my October book haul. So the first thing I wanted to share with you isn't a book, but it's this really nice reusable bag. I got it. It says Savers and it has a little recycling thing. But Savers is actually the name of the thrift store that I shop at quite often. Have uh, books where they are buy four, get the fifth free. So I typically get 10 or 15 books depending on the day and what they have there. First thing, I thought it was really cute and they don't do plastic there which is great for the earth uh they used to do paper bags for 10 cents but they offered me this and i really liked it so i was just like yeah let's do it I'll start with my unboxings so this one i've already opened this was from my mom and it's not a book but it was still so freaking awesome. So my mommy sent me pictures. So this is the last time I saw her. And then she wrote me, I love you. And it just like completely made my day. And then there's one of me and my mom and my hubby and actually there's two of them and then this one she got a puppy now her puppy's bigger than that but oh my gosh that is my mommy and beauty the name of the dog is beauty but oh it just completely made my day but i had to show it off now this is a book I think it's a book that I want on Goodreads, so I think it's an ARC, but I don't know for sure, honestly. I might have to go get a knife, guys. There it is. Let's see it. Let's see it. I'm pretty sure it's a Goodreads book. Just kidding. Okay, let's... We'll throw that over there. Oh my gosh, it's a heavy book. This I won on Goodreads. It's a collection of short stories. I've been really trying to get into short stories more. So this is Ben Bova, my favorites. Or my favorites by Ben Bova. Um, so this is like sci-fi short stories. So it's a collection of short sci-fi reads, which will be a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I really am trying to read more, you know, outside of my normal realm. I'm very excited, and he wrapped it so nice when he sent it to me. Like, most of the time when I get stuff from Goodreads, it's just in like a yellow or a vanilla envelope. Now let's get to the books that I've already, or that I bought physically myself. Um, most of these I got from trading other books that I no longer want. Uh, I haven't traded, that's not true. I traded all my Stephen King because I'm just done with Stephen King. I've tried several books. I love one of his books, but his writing just isn't for me. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Don't come at me, please. Um, so I got rid of those and I got rid of all my DNFs. So I traded the books that I'm no longer excited for for all of these. And two of them I've already read. So let's talk about the ones I've read. So the first one is Fantastic Mr. Fox by Roald Dahl. Uh, it's just a really cute middle grade book. 
Uh, this one's my favorite of his so far that I've read. Uh, I'm not the intended audience, and that's obvious. Uh, but I thought it was really cute. You followed this box who is trying to provide for his family, and the farmers get mad at him because he's eating all their animals. So uh, they sit in front of the fox hole waiting for him to come out and they want to hunt him down. I really have a goal to read all of his books. I think I've only read six or seven of them this year and I haven't ever read one before that so there is that. Then I found this book called Cake. It says Art Jumble Presents Cake Volume 1. I haven't been able to find another volume. If you've read this and you know that there's another volume, please let me know where I can find it because I really enjoyed this. So this has nine different authors with like ten sh different short stories in graphic novel form now. And so they're all different styles and they all have different subject matter. Uh, some of them are really weird. So because like three of them were just too weird for me and I didn't like, it was just out of my comfort zone in the weird factor, I gave this star I gave this book four stars, but it was definitely worth it. Something that was weird is that I'm the only one that's rated this on Goodreads, so that's interesting. And it's been out since 2008, but I very much enjoyed it. There's like dog kisses, and then that one's about the planet, and it's just, it was just really cute. I actually did a reading vlog of reading this and if it's up I'll link it up here if it's not then it will be soon um this the rest I haven't read yet uh but this one in particular I bought last month and I don't think I included it in my book haul from September but this is Arizona, then and now, people in places. So it's literally just a picture book of then versus now. It's got like then and now, and then it's got some that are just the past and just the few, uh, just what it looks like now. See, and. I just really enjoy these. These are nice little table books because you can just pick them up and flip through them or you can take the time. The reason that I picked it up was because I'm a teacher and I thought that this would be really cool to do some like projects. Um, so I'm like a year away from graduating and being a teacher that gets paid, but I am, I do have student teaching and uh, field work and I have a class right now, but we're still in the learning process. So my social studies teacher has been talking all semester about how pictures speak louder than words, especially with social studies. So I thought that that would be so cool to use some of these pictures for, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> for social studies lessons. So I really do enjoy this. I might actually count it as a book that I'm gonna read because I read graphic novels that don't have words or many words. So yeah, this is going to count on my TBR someday. But see, this is just like recent 
So, I, I just really love these kind of things. And honestly, my husband found this and he lo was looking at it. He's like, oh, it's cool. And I'm like, oh, should I get it? And he's like, I mean, if you want, I'm like, would you look at it? And he said, yeah. A lot of these books, I don't know what they're about. I, I, okay, here's how it's gonna happen. Since I have so many books, I'm just gonna go through them as quickly as possible, tell you what I do know, or why I picked it out if I don't know much about it, and that's how we're gonna do it. This first stack, this is Life of Pi by Yan Marl, Pi Paddle, a God-loving boy and the son of a zookeeper. Hi, Jelly Bean, has love of stories and practices not only his native Hinduism, Hinduism but also Christianity and Islam. When Pai is 16, his family and their zoo animals immigrate from India to North America aboard a Japanese cargo ship. Honestly, not 100% sold on it, but... Chantel from Chantel at an Intentional Life was kind of skeptical about reading it too and then she read it and she actually liked it. And the Woman in Black by Susan Hill. I don't know much about it other than it's a ghost story. This one is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Uh, this is a classic, like, horror book, and that is literally all that I know about this. Oh my gosh, I was so excited when I found this at my bookstore. The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill, and this is everywhere on BookTube right now. So it's a fantasy middle grade about this village that thinks that takes a baby every single year and puts the baby in the forest for this witch to take as basically like payment for being uh, letting them live there but the witch has found this a baby in the middle of the forest once a year and she doesn't understand why these villagers are keep giving a baby away to to her so she takes them to a safe place a safe home but one year she accidentally feeds this girl moon so excited for this I don't like fantasy books unless it's middle grade. Is that weird? Probably. But I'm, this is like hyped on my list of I want to read it now. I've actually gone to my local bookstore a couple times this month. <laughs> so these were all from my first trip to the bookstore. Yes. So there's Paper Girls, which is another graphic novel. I'm really getting into my graphic novels. But uh, this is about these girls who are best friends. They are 12 years old and they deliver papers and then they have some kind of Halloween adventure. And then we got Bella Boo. Her name is Bella, but I call her Bella Boo. Her baby girl. Okay, so I have been reading dystopians. The fifth wave in particular is the dystopian that I'm really loving right now. So I had to get more dystopians. I 
have never read or seen this movie before, but it is The Maze Runner by James Dashner, which everyone already knows what this is and has read it, except for me, you know? Then I hauled Teen Trailblazers, 30 Fearless Girls Who Changed the World Before They Were 20 by Jennifer Calvert, illustrated by the Vesna Asanovic, Asavonic, I can't say that last name, nonfiction type of thing about different women who have changed history. Then <coughs> I got this big book. Let's see how many pages. I think it's like 800. Okay, 710 books. Right. 710 books. 710 pages. She floppy and heavy. But it's House of Leaves by Mark Z. Daniel Whiskey. I know it's a scary book. I know it's horror. And I know that the style in this book is so different. And I think you have to like solve some riddles. I mean, technically, I guess this is nonfiction. It is, um, I, I really want to get back into my Wicca ways, so I'm starting to collect my tarot cards and my numberology and my astrology, and I want to get back into that because I kind of haven't for the past couple years, and I miss it. Uh, I felt very... When I do my Wicca... I feel very one with earth. I feel very meditated, very calm, and I just really enjoy it. So I got this book of tarot cards that tell you what each card is, what it means, and there are a couple different layouts here, and I'm just really excited for it. Uh, I need to get some tarot cards, but I think my husband's gonna buy me some for Christmas. I got this book called The Water Knife by Paolo Balagalfi. Balagalfi? Um, so honestly, I mostly got this because my professor recommended it to me when we were doing our unit on water. So, it's about this dystopian future? I don't know if it's dystopian. Let's see. In the near future, the Colorado River has dwindled to a trickle. Detective, assassin, and spy Angel Valquez cuts water for the Southern Nevada Water Authority, ensuring its lush archaeological developments can bloom in Vegas. When rumors of a game-changing water source surface in Phoenix, Angel is sent south to hunt for answers that seem to evaporate as the heat index soars and the landscape becomes more and more operative. Hmm. So, it's about... So, if you don't know, in Arizona, they, like, created this watershed to take water from the Colorado River that runs in California, Arizona, Colorado area, and they made, they engineered this watershed to bring the water to southern Arizona, places like Phoenix and Tucson, and... A lot of stuff happens to the water in the process that it's coming down to Phoenix and Tucson area. A lot of it gets evaporated, there's particles that get in the water, and it's just, 
it's honestly it was so expensive to do and it's, it's not the best way to get water but I'm really interested in the story uh, I just want to know the new, near future of no water in Arizona or at least like the southern part of Arizona I found three books at the dollar store so if you don't look for books at the dollar store I'm, I'm telling you these well at least one of these I've heard about and the other two just sounded really really good but I've gotten so many books at the dollar store and usually they end up being really good so Next time you're at the dollar store, check out the book section. It is Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Maria Simple. Uh, I honestly don't know anything about this. The one I found at the dollar store is The History of Food in 101 Objects. So again, it's a non-fiction and it's literally well that's not so it's different objects and what they mean to the food industry and then we got these really nice in pages of blueberries and grapefruits here and gone by Halen Beck uh, I think it's a thriller another classic horror story this is the haunting of hill house by shirley jackson penguin classics edition another world doll book see the world's number one storyteller so this is seo trot and i picked it up because of the cover but also because World Doll, I want to read all of his books. Okay, and then something that you guys might not know about me is that in high school I read all of the Chicken Soup books. I read every teenage edition. I think there were three of them or four of them. Then I read For the Woman's Soul, Chicken Soup for the Soul, Chicken Soup for the Dog Lovers. I just really enjoy chicken soup books. I actually wouldn't mind starting to collect those again. So I found a chicken soup for the soul book that I haven't read before. But it is Chicken Soup for the Soul, Life Lessons from the Dog. 101 Tales of Family, Friendship, and Fun. This one I got by accident. I mean, I didn't, but I did. So, I bought Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason by Helen Fielding. I should have read right here, author of the best-selling Bridget Jones Diary. I thought this was the first one, but it's not. It's the second in the series. It's really thick edition. It's a cute edition. Yeah. Uh, by E.B. White. It has Charlotte's Web, which is on my TBR and has been on my TBR for a very long time. I've never read it, but everyone knows the story of Charlotte's Web. And then Stuart Little. Everyone knows that. I used to love the movie or the movies of Stuart Little, so I'm really excited for that. Then The Trumpet of the Swan. I don't know what that one's about. Woo. Then I got another short story collection. So if you like the idea, I think I really like this idea of vlogging when I read short stories and each short story I can kind of give you an honest reaction of how I'm feeling about that book or that story if I liked it if I will continue to find books by this author based on the short stories or 
just my initial reactions and if I like them and kind of ranking which ones are my favorite. If you guys like that idea, please give this a video a big thumbs up. I feel like that would be a really cool thing to do. So it's just a, they're all different twisted tales of Alice in Wonderland, which I have read for the first time in 2020. And you know, I have the unpopular opinion here where I don't understand the hype. Okay, that's not true. I understand the hype. And I think for a kid, it's perfect but because i waited so late in life to read it for the first time i didn't love it i didn't get the nostalgia from it or anything but it was a cute story these two go together kind of um let's see so i found the merry adventures of robin hood by howard Plow, Hero, Outlaw, Legend. Everyone knows the basic story of Robin Hood, including me, but I've never read it. Found this book at the same thrift store at the same time, and I couldn't pass it up even though I've never read the original. I definitely want to read the original first. I found... Robin. Okay, I found Hood by Stephen R. Lawhead, which is Robin Hood, The Legend Begins Anew. So it's a retelling. So that is almost all my books. Now we have the last two that I kept for last on purpose. So I'm getting back into writing. I kind of stopped for a little over a year because I kind of lost faith in myself as a writer. Not because I'm not good at writing. I am and I really enjoy it. I just lost my publisher at no fault. It was neither of our faults. Just something happened and I completely understand where they were coming from but they had to cut ties with a lot of their clients and uh, it just kind of broke me down a little bit but I'm really excited to get back into it I've been writing a little bit but I want to focus on it more in 2021 so I found these two writing books the first one is the writer's Portable Therapist, 25 Sessions to a Creativity Cure by Rachel Ballen, Ph.D. So this I found at my thrift store, and I wasn't going to grab it, but it has prompts, and no one wrote in this book. It's in really good condition. You have to be right here. Right here? Right here? Good boy. Okay. Okay. This one is called Who Am I by Linda K. Lynch, Journaling for Self-Discovery. So I absolutely love these kind of books. They basically, they're kind of like personality tests. That's how I think of them. What do you believe in? How do your beliefs and thoughts affect your life? Begin to discover the answer within the following questions. How do you feel about your life as it is right now? Right for five minutes. A bit of a angle change because, well, it's a different day and also my tripod broke because someone was too... Okay, it was my fault, okay? I just broke my tripod, so I need a new one now. But I thought I was done with this video. And then my husband made me go book shopping. So the first one, I the first book I picked up today was Gabby and Gator by James Brooks. I honestly think this is a middle grade. I've heard really good things, but 
honestly I got it because well for one look at that art style and for two I've heard about this before it's a middle grade or children's book but it's about a friendship between a gator and this girl named Gabby I got oh this was one of the only ones that is not a graphic novel and I was so excited when I found it it is like a mass market paperback almost except for the words are a little bit bigger in this than a true mass market paperback so typically I wouldn't buy you know like this kind of book but I haven't found this book anywhere and I've been really wanting to read it it's all over booktube so I got The Troop by Nick Cutter it's a survival story about Boy Scouts, Tr or just a troop of boys in Canada, they go into this wilderness, and then someone they don't know kind of crashes their party. So I got my second Neil Gaiman book earlier this month. I bought The Graveyard by Neil Gaiman, which is another middle grade book, I believe. So there's you know, everyone knows what Coraline is. This has been adapted into a movie, which I've never seen. And honestly, I just want to give Neil Gaiman a try. And his middle grade seems perfect for me because I'm not a big fantasy person. Actually, I hate fantasy. Um, I like fantasy movies. And sometimes fantasy TV shows, but for some reason when I read fantasy, I don't typically love it. This one is also a non-fiction book. It's not exactly, it's not a graphic novel. So I guess I got a few graphic novels and a few not graphic novels. But I found The Book of Spells. Over 40 secret recipes to get your own way in love, work, and play. Three emergency spells on skilled pages by Nicola D. Pulford. So one of my goals for 2021 is to get back into my Wicca. So I've been collecting more nonfiction Wicca type books. This one is my first spell book. I also have how to read palms and tarot card readings although I don't have tarot cards yet so it doesn't make much sense but spoiler alert I think my husband's gonna get me tarot cards for Christmas Not anymore. <laughs> your headphones were supposed to be on babe <laughs> go back to your world put your headphones on and stop listening
out that many books when I was getting them this month, but hey, you know, shopping for books is kind of therapeutic for me. Anyways, if you've read any of these books, please leave in the comments below what you thought of them, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. In December, I'm going to do, I don't know if it's going to be daily videos, but we're going to have a ton of like goal videos for 2021 and wrap ups for this year. I think I'm going to have my reading year start December 1st, so everything from November 30th and December between November 30th, no, no, between December 1st of 2019 and November 30th of this year will be like my best of, my worst of, things I DNF'd, uh, most disappointing, you know, all the wrap up stuff of the year will be in the whole month of December along with the goals for next year. So I have a ton of stuff planned for you guys. So please subscribe to my channel and hit the little notification bell and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.